Greetings, Professor Hobo here to answer one of the frequently asked questions I get asked all the time. Can you charge an electric bike, more specifically an electric bike battery, with solar? Today I'm going to show you how it's done on the cheap. Here I have two electric bike batteries and their respective chargers. One is from a common store bought hub drive bike. The other is from my DIY custom build mid drive bike. Now, unless you have a Surround or some other high end machine with a huge battery and a high amp charger, this trick should work for you. Now, even if you do have one of those fancy monster bikes, I'll show you later how you can charge that one too from solar, but it's going to cost you a little bit more. However, if you spent five grand on an electric bike, then you can already afford it. Okay, so let's push this one out of the way and start with the common electric bike. This is the kind of battery and basic charger you would get on a rad bike, like a rad rover, or a plethora of Chinese import bikes. So these batteries come in different shapes and sizes. They may not look like this at all. This actually gets inserted into the frame of the bike. Some of them are more external and look more like this. But the thing is, they're pretty much all the same inside. They almost all use NMC cells. And this one is a 48 volt battery, which is pretty standard. Most of your cheaper bikes under two grand are gonna be 36 or 48 volts. And this is 14 and a half amp hours, which is a little bit larger than normal. And if you do the math, that works out to be around 700 watt hours. Now you can figure that out simply by multiplying the amp hours times the volts. And that gives you the watt hours of the battery. So this is the standard battery and charger you get on one of those cheap rad bikes. Most of these chargers are only one to three amps and are designed for a slow overnight charge. Sometimes the brand will offer you a speed charger that can do up to five amps. Next, the best and safest way to charge your electric bike battery is simply using the charger it came with. If you know what you're doing, you can get a faster aftermarket charger, but for this example, let's keep it simple. Now what you need next is a solar generator. I have a very cheap, very basic Jackery Explorer 240 that I charged earlier today with solar. The Jackery 240, however, is only really gonna work on a basic charger system or a charger that allows you to limit to three amps, otherwise you'll overload the inverter. Now, why the Jackery 240 and not something else? Well, first, this is one of the lightest, cheapest, yet most reliable micro solar generators available. They've sold tens of thousands of these suckers over the years, and yeah, it's more outdated than your old man's Buick station wagon, but it still does the job. It has an inverter capable of 200 watts that can provide just enough to run your basic chargers up to three amps. So let's go ahead, plug in our battery charger into this and see how much power it uses. Now note that both of these batteries have been run down to about 70% stated charge, which is typical for me after about a 15 to 20 mile ride. On the back here, it says it is a 54 volt output with two amps. So it should run 110, 115 watts typically. You can see here on the Jackery 240, it says it is running about 138 watts or so. And the reason for that is of course, there's loss of the inverter. You can see here, even after unplugging the battery, the inverter itself is actually using 12 watts just to turn on. So there are your results. That's why you need something with around a 200 watt inverter to charge in most electric bike batteries because most of these chargers are gonna be anywhere from one to three amps. If this would have been a three amp charger, I would have been pushing this 200 watt inverter to the limit. Now this setup in particular is good for shorter rides. Why would you say that? Because the Jackery 240 only has 240 watt hours. Your electric bike battery in this case can handle 700 watt hours and realize that the Jackery 240 is gonna lose some of that power to converting it on the inverter. So you're only gonna get about 200, 210 watt hours out of this battery. Now what's the huge upside to a dinky, cheap, little lightweight battery like this one? Is that if you have a bike rack, you can actually strap this to your bike rack and take it with you and get 30% more range. Now what about what's next on the agenda? That's gonna be my electric bike battery from my custom bike that I made myself. Now I have many, many videos of me riding it. I have four or five videos of me building it, reviewing it. They're all three or four years old at this point. So you have to really go back. You can find a playlist on my channel that covers all my electric bike stuff if you're interested to see it perform and all that other stuff. And want to know how much I spent way back in the day. Bikes now are so much cheaper than they were when I built mine. 
but mine is still awesome. I can still, you know, do burnouts on it, wheelies and everything just under pure electric power. I can climb pretty much the steepest hills where these cheaper bikes, they can't do any of that. They're basically for putting around town unless you have some monster build of four or 5,000 watts, it's really not gonna push you around without pedaling. So how is this battery different? Well, it's really not. I paid an extra 100 bucks for the charger. That's the difference. This is a customized charger. They call it an advanced charger because it allows you to select amps and how much you wanna charge your battery, 80, 90, or 100%. And it allows you to adjust from one to five amps. So it's fully adjustable, and to me, this was worth its weight in gold because it allows me to either slow charge the battery and extend the life, or if I'm gonna do a lot of riding back to back, I can put it on five amps and I can charge this thing up in about two hours. Now the difference between this battery and this battery, this has better cells in it. These are more of a name brand cell. I don't remember if it's Panasonic or something, but when I bought this five years ago, it was one of the top name brand NMC cells. It's supposed to last longer than the other ones. This is also a 52 volt battery where this is only a 48 volt battery. You're pretty much not gonna buy too many off the shelf electric bikes that have a 52 volt or higher battery unless you're paying the Buku bucks. So this is 52 volts at 13 and a half amps. So if you do that multiplication, that works out to be 702 watt hours. So these are virtually identical when it comes to capacity. Now the higher voltage on this just means more power to the motor as my motor is 1500 watts or two horsepower, which is twice what the motor is on the other bike. Now typically I have this set to 80% because I want to top up this battery to 80% for storage. I don't ride my bikes that often anymore since I don't live on the road anymore. I used to ride them a lot when I was on the road, but now I'm kind of in a fixed position way out in rural America. I typically store this at 80% charge to extend the life of the battery. Now the NMC batteries in here are virtually the same as what's used in all Jackery products. The reason why they use NMC and not lithium iron phosphate is because of weight. Lithium iron phosphate weighs like 25% more for the same amount of power. And when you're talking about bikes or electric cars like Tesla's, they all use NMC style batteries. Now I know Tesla's moving over to lithium iron phosphate for their cheaper cars, but Virtually everybody else uses some sort of NMC technology. And if you limit the top up charge to 80% so they go all the way to 100 and you don't drain it below 20%, if you keep that battery from 20 to 80% at all times, you're gonna get thousands of cycles out of one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead for this example. Since I know this battery is only discharged about 70%, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 100% and then we're gonna go ahead and set this at one amp. And I'm gonna show you the difference. Here we have our Jackery 240, plug it in into the inverter, charger kicks on, let's see what it's pulling at one amp. So it's pulling 72 watts, which is about typical for a one amp charger. Now I'm turning it up to three amps. You can see the difference between one amp and a three amp charger. Now at three amps, we're already pushing the 200 watt inverter to its limit. So I know it's gonna happen once we try to crank it up to five amps. There we go, of course I expected the 240 to conk out once it tried to hit 400 watts. This is why the Jackery 240 is just too small for fast chargers. Now let's step up our game a bit. Now here's the Jackery 500 with more than twice the power and it has a 500 watt inverter which should be able to handle up to a 10 amp charger. So let's plug our five amp charger in again at maximum and see what it pulls. As you can see there, it's pulling about 320 to 325 watts on a five amp charger. Now with the Jackery 500, you can not only use a fast charger, but with the extra 500 watt hour capacity, you can charge your typical e-bike battery from dead to 70% or from 30% to full. Now the 500 is obviously a lot bigger and heavier, so you might not really want to strap this to the back of your bike, but there's nothing stopping you from doing that either. Now for those of you with Surons or other high-end super bikes, you're still gonna need something bigger than this. Many of these big boys will have 80 volt or higher batteries with 10 amp chargers that will pull in the 800 to 1000 watt range. For that, we have the Jackery 1000. Now the big upside to the Jackery 1000 is that it can be charged a lot faster with solar since it's a more modern product. The 240 and 500 from Jackery are aging. Now with 200 watts of solar, you can charge this 1000 model 
with eight hours of good sun. Now, the biggest upside to the 1000 is that you can fully charge either one of your electric bike batteries from dead to full and still have power left to run your lights at night and make a pot roast in your Instant Pot. This again assumes that your battery for your electric bike is somewhere in that 700 watt hour range and not a Suron or something where it's like 2,000, 3,000 watt hours. Now the downside of course is that the 1,000 is certainly too big and heavy to haul on a bike unless you're pulling a trailer. In that case, you can just toss your solar panels in there too and charge while you ride. Now I know a few of you are gonna furiously type in the comments that I'm cheating by using a solar generator to charge the batteries rather than charge them directly with the solar panels. Well, you can technically charge your electric bike batteries directly with solar panels if you, one, have enough solar panels in series to get at least 60 volts. Two, have perfect sky conditions with no clouds because these batteries don't like to be charged with variable voltage. They want a set voltage until they're charged. Three, you gotta use one of those cheap, shady buck converters to drop the voltage to the perfect voltage that your battery needs. So that's gonna depend on what voltage your battery is. And four, basically risk literally exploding your expensive battery by screwing something up or having one of those cheap buck converters fail. And I've had three or four of those buck converters fail and in one case, it blew up a mini computer. So I don't think I'd trust something like that on a $500 battery that could possibly catch on fire and explode. So yes, it can be done, but I'm not gonna condone something like that on this channel because it's simply too dangerous for most folks. And if you wanna make a YouTube channel on how to do it, feel free. And now that I have you all amped up, get it? Let's talk about how you can get any of these Jackery products for a fat discount. It just happens to be Jackery's ninth birthday. Yay! So they're having a huge blowout sale starting right now. Yes, yeah, so starting right now, October 18th, 2021 through October 20th, only on Jackery's store, there is a site-wide 15% off sale across the board on all their power stations, solar generator bundles, and solar panels. There's no special code necessary. The discounts are all automatic. So if you're interested in checking out any of these Jackery products that I showed you today during the sale, there's a link in the description of this video that'll take you to their sale page. It's a special page that'll tell you all about what's going on and give you links to the products at their special price. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And of course, every time I bring a solar panel out, these are the sky conditions. They say Arizona is the sunniest state in the country, but certainly doesn't seem that way to me. RV Golf Guy, Ant Medic Audio Repair, Andrew Vaughn, Roger Cardano, Brian Blue, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroko.